Sego Sego Guego. Welcome back to my channel. It's Chef Tanya Brandt, and today we're still here in gorgeous, beautiful old Fort Erie. So Old Fort Erie is located right on the water, right on the lake of um, Lake Erie. So um, fish was one of the things that um, soldiers would have been able to supplement their diet with, something outside of rations. I'd say three of the most popular fish that at the time that soldiers would have been eating, um, one was salmon, which is actually, I believe it is extinct now in the Great Lakes, but we did at one time have salmon. Um, the other would have been sturgeon. It is an endangered species now, so um, I don't really want to promote eating a lot of sturgeon because it is an endangered species. So whitefish was the other one that, th that they had around here that would have been common. And I have that today. So I already have it cleaned up and it's a fillet. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna do a blue corn um, crust on it and we're gonna pan sear it over the fire. And we're also going to take another one and we're gonna cook it by the fire, but that's just gonna be for the smoke. We wanna smoke that piece and we're gonna make a dip with it. So um, I wanna get this one prepped so we can get it over the fire. So it's gonna be a super simple. All we're gonna do, I have some blue corn here. So this is gonna be um, blue corn flour that I'm using. And I'm just gonna add a little bit to that. So. Uh, mostly just for the looks, I got some nettle and I'm also going to add some uh, smoked cedar salt. If you think you need it, you could do like an egg wash and that kind of stuff, but I think we should be fine without it. It's sticking nice. And this is, um, because it's made with the blue corn, it is uh, like a gluten-free option. We're going to get that on the fire now. Okay, now we're gonna do a recipe that I'm actually really excited to do. It's something really basic for most indigenous people, but it is something that I haven't done on my channel yet. And that is to make scone. And yes, we call it scone. And even in the place that we are right now, scone is a proper term. Um, because of the heavy British influence that was in this area. And it is really a bread that came um, with us being introduced to European foods and commodity products. So we got those breads from that, um, in that time, in that era. We're going to take these scones and we're gonna slice it and make like little chips for it. So we're gonna have like a chip and dip once it's all done. I'm gonna put about three cups of flour in here. So one change that I am going to make is I'm gonna put three cups of flour in here and then I'm gonna add a cup of blue corn flour. So that's probably not something that they would have done, but because it is a, a Haudenosaunee corn, I want to um, kind of add that. And then just in terms of like health, it's a way of reducing the amount of gluten that you're putting in, and that you're consuming. I have four cups of flour in here, so I'm gonna use, I have about five teaspoons of um, baking powder. I would normally say four, but I'm doing five because with the corn you want to use extra for extra leavening because it's heavier. And that should be fine. And then I have about two teaspoons of salt that's going in with that as well. So you want to mix that up and get a nice good product. Um, so you can see, you almost can't even see the blue corn flour in there, but once they come out when it's done, there'll be a nice um, blue pretty tinge to it. So once you got that mixed up good, we're gonna take our fat, that's for our bread, and we're using um, lard, because that would be something obviously very common with the time period and the commodity products that they would have been working with. Okay, so we wanna take our lard and when we have it in here, we're gonna take it and just grind it up nice and fine. You take both hands and go like this and kind of rub it into itself and you can get it pretty fine. If you want like a flakier scone, um, you'll get something more like a biscuit kind of dough. You can leave a little bit bigger, like pea-sized kind of pieces of lard, but I, I rub it in there pretty good. We're gonna add buttermilk to this. Um, that's kind of like an essential in Haudenosaunee communities that you're gonna use sour milk or you're gonna use buttermilk to do this. Um, some people would use 
uh, just plain water, but um, yeah, no, <laughs> we're not, we're not going to do that. We're going to do it right. <laughs> so I'm going to add about two cups of liquid here of the buttermilk. So the challenge here when you're making scone is that you got to do all of this in one shot. Like you're, there's not really adding too much liquid after. You have a little bit of wiggle room, but that's going to add to your product and it's going to add to, um, it'll make a stiffer, a stiffer bread. And it can be cooked, it can be baked in the oven, which we're going to do for that, or it can be fried. So you can see how that's coming together in a ball. I'll take it out so you can see it better. So I'm just going to pour that on onto the baking dish here. So you can see like it is it's really a really nice, it's not a stiff dough at all. Um, so once it comes together like that, I'm going to need a little bit more flour for my board. And then I'm also going to put some on here. This is the baking dish that we're going to put in the, it's going to say in the oven, but I guess in the fireplace. <laughs> um, so you see, and you don't want to, you actually want to handle this the least amount as possible. You don't want to over mix it and you get those gluten strings that make it tough. So that's good right there. I have a rolling pin. So we're going to roll this out to, I'm going to say about an inch, inch and a half thickness. And that's, a, that's all we do. <laughs> So I'm going to put a couple on there and I'll fill this up and any that are left over, I'll take them and we'll fry those ones. Okay. So for doneness on these, when you're making them in the oven, you'll see they'll get brown on the bottom, but once they start to get that color on the top, that's when you know that they're done. This one will ball up again. And like I said, you don't want to uh, knead it too much if you don't have to. I want to try and get three out of this, so I'll do that and I'll just ball this last one up and that way I can show you how you fry them as well for, and you'd eat them for the same thing. Um, I prefer oven baked for like stuff like if you're eating our corn soup, just um, corn soup has like a, like the pork fat and stuff in it. So it's, uh, it's usually enough grease. You don't want it on your bread too. <laughs> Okay, so those are the ones we're going to fry. I'm going to put these ones into the oven and we're going to go check on our, um, our fish. So we didn't do anything to this because we really wanted the smoke flavor to be what permeates the fish and what's added to um, our dip because we're going to add other ingredients to that. So um, yeah, you can see it. The skin's still on there. Um, I am going to take this off. I'm not going to put it in as part of the dip. You can eat it. Some people do, some people don't. It's a personal preference kind of thing. So, um, but we're going to leave that out for, um, so it'll be a nicer product. We're going to take the fish that we smoked and we're going to make um, a dip with it. And we're going to use our scone that we made. And that's going to be um, what we take with that. So I don't want to use the skin on here just because it's not very pretty. <laughs> so we're going to take that and kind of peel this off and you see it coming right off the skin. And we're just going to take as much of that meat that we can get. And because it's dried, um, obviously it's a little, <laughs> a little more dried out at this point. Um, but that's okay. That's the reason why we're putting it into a dip. And this would actually be a good way to like preserve the fish, right? Like they're not, fish goes funky in a matter of hours. So this definitely been something like soon as it's out of the water, if they were making it like that day for eating and they wanted to preserve it at all, even for till the next day, um, this would have been a good way to, um, to preserve that fish. Okay, so we have our fish all nice and flaked up here. I'm just gonna put that in a bowl for later for the dip because we're going to mix it all together. All right. Um, this is cream cheese that I have here. That's what we're going to put and that's what we're going to mash it together. Um, I have a little bit of buttermilk here. That's what we're going to put in there just to like thin it just in case um, if we need that. I'm going to slice a few rounds of these because I want to make our, our finished dish pretty. And then I'm going to take a, a bit, not too much, um, to go inside of the dip as well. I have some dill here, fresh dill that's going to go into our thing as well. 
probably enough for the dip. Okay. So normally um, a dip like this, I would use an electric mixer or even a food processor. Um, so in the spirit of that time, I'm not gonna use anything. I'm just gonna um, sweat for you and, <laughs> and do it the hard way. But my cream cheese is um, nice and, and um, nice and soft at this point. So. And you want fairly small pieces of scallion because every piece of, um, all the dip you want, a little bit of everything um, in every bite. Just to make it look pretty, once again, I'm gonna put a little bit of nettle in there just for the look. This is some smoked pignon salt. You don't wanna put too much in there. I didn't smoke, um, didn't salt the fish at all, but the smoke kinda of naturally gives it like a little bit of a salty taste. And I'm just gonna do about two pinches of the, the wild onion powder. And just a squeeze of lemon juice as well. I just don't want my seeds to get in there. And that'll help brighten the flavor and it helps bring it out too with um, the dill that's in there as well. Okay, so we're gonna take our scone. You see them here. I kind of sliced it up so we have these nice little, um, nice little area to eat our, our dip with. Um, I chose to use um, cream cheese because I didn't know, like I seen some things that they might have gotten cheese as part of their rations, but it would have been very small, literally like an ounce piece. Um, so I wanted to, to do that, you'll see. Um, so if you whip this up with an electric mixer, what you can do is you're gonna be working the air into it. So working that air into it is awesome because it's gonna give you an, a lighter product so when you're eating it, it's not a, as dense. Um, and in some cases, if you whip it enough, you wouldn't even know that it's, um, that it's cream cheese. So it is fairly soft and good. I am kind of happy with the texture, but I am gonna put a touch of buttermilk in here. That will help um, just loosen it up a bit. So I only put about a tablespoon in there to do that. So we're gonna assemble a salad with the blue corn encrusted pan fried white fish. So it's a mo quite the mouthful. But to go with that, we're also gonna have a blueberry sweetgrass vinaigrette that we're gonna make with that. So that's what we're gonna make right now. So this is my blueberry sweetgrass um, puree that I pre-made. And if you wanna see this, I do have this recipe on my website. It's cheftaniabrand.com and you can just look for um, blueberry sweetgrass <laughs> um, vinaigrette. So what I'm gonna do is about equal thirds, equal thirds of this. This is olive oil, and I love this olive oil. It's actually from California and made by indigenous people. So that's the Sika Hills, and they make a very an excellent quality product. They also do things like elderberry vinegar. Um, they sell wine. So definitely check them out if you wanna look, look more into um, indigenous products. Um, I have some maple syrup here, and that's just to help sweeten that. And I just put about a tablespoon of that in there, and then this is the other third is gonna be apple cider vinegar. So we're just gonna take that and whisk it up. So now we're gonna assemble a little bit of a salad here. So I have some fresh salad greens. These are from farmer's market. Put a couple of these in there, and these are red amaranth leaves. So they're similar to spinach, high in iron. You give them the same treatment that you would give spinach. So that way, we put it in there, it's really pretty. Like, the, the color is amazing. Like, look at that. And I also have, these are uh, red clovers, but what I'm gonna do is pull them out and put the fish onto that. And I'm gonna put some of this onto the fish as well. Just because these colors are just like absolutely amazing. <laughs> These are, because they're in season right now, I wanted to use some Concord grapes because first of all, they're pretty, they taste amazing. Their flavor is so like, just a really deep flavor. These also are um, the only domestically grown grape that is actually indigenous to North America. So right now it is high time. <laughs> 
for our grapes. This is more what it looked like outside when it's unkept growing in the wild. If you kind of tend to them, they do get more like the bunch, um, proper bunch looking like this one. So you can see how they, how they evolved with um, man touching it, I guess. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take some of the greens from this one to, you don't really want a huge oniony taste because the fish is really light. And I wanted to put a couple of peach slices in there because we are in Niagara region and they're in season and they're just so pretty. Alrighty, there's our fish salad there. So it's a blue corn pan fried uh, white fish with a blueberry sweetgrass vinaigrette. Thank you for watching today for um, I guess our fish episode where we made our pan fried fish and our fish dip. And I wanna thank you for watching today. And if you like what you've seen here, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to be the first to know of new uploads for Chef Tanya Brandt. And also be sure to look in and see that this is gonna be one of a series um, at Old Fort Erie here. And I hope you join me for that too. Hola.